Hello everyone, Under here again. Uh, in this video I'm going to do another mini channel update followed by my first impressions on how multiplayer Maya is going to fare. You'll have to excuse my hair, it's getting a bit long because of the lockdown, I can't get it cut at the moment. But yeah, we're going to jump straight into it, so let's get going. So the first thing I wanted to basically ask you guys is what sort of information do you want in the uh, in the games that I upload to YouTube, uh, primarily the, the past Twitch broadcasts? Obviously, if I get uh, made rel in the game or I die, a lot of you guys aren't actually in CPL, so you're not going to see the, the final result. So what I can do is I can start putting the the, the rank reporting, as we call it in CPL, the, the sort of standings when the game finishes in the uh, in the in the YouTube description, just so you guys can see. I could maybe put it at the bottom so it isn't you know right there when you're looking at the video. Another thing I've been doing is I haven't been uploading too many um, games where I've been in a in a very early sort of classical a row war, which isn't going to really go anywhere. And I know it's not going to be, you know, uh, good content for people that want to improve on the game, so to speak. But again, do you guys want to see those those um, row war games or should I just keep not uploading them? Another thing I've been doing is trimming the videos a bit more, getting rid of the lengthy pauses in the game. Um, things like, you know, if someone DCs, rage quits or loses their internet, there could be like up to a 10 minute pause at any point. I have been cropping them out, but again, um, I guess a downside to that would be uh, you'll miss what I'm talking about in the uh, in the pause. So yeah, just tell me what you guys want to see on the um, in the description, um, I can start adding the report, like I said. Uh, and finally, things that I'm working on at the moment is um, obviously trying to improve information for you guys that watch on YouTube. And um, I am doing part two on the uh, how to play the early game. Uh, I'm just having a bit of trouble with the, the better balance game mod being way outdated because obviously it's been a while since I, uh, I did the first one. So yeah, I'll be working on that. Um, but now let's get into the uh, the Maya. Okay, so on to the Maya reveal. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the trailer that the uh, official uh, developers of the game made. I'm going to pause it when there's something interesting pops up and we'll talk about it. Um, do bear in mind this is going to be for multiplayer only. So anything that I discuss is going to be focused on how I think it's going to impact multiplayer games, not single player. So let's get into it. Six Sky leads the Maya in Sid Meier's Civilization Six. Lady Six Sky's rule of the Maya Empire established a new iron-willed dynasty. She used political savvy and ruthless warfare to bring dissenting city-states back into order. The Maya don't gain extra housing from settling adjacent to fresh water and coasts. Instead. Okay, so that's the first thing that we need to discuss. They don't gain additional housing from settling next to rivers or the coast. That is going to play a really key role, I think, in multiplayer games. It's going to, if you do settle off any sort of water, so not next to a river, not next to the coast, it is going to deter people from attacking you. Obviously, they don't want the cities that they can't really sort of grow and develop into good cities very quickly especially uh, in the very early game when you don't have access to aqueducts and you don't really want to build granaries um basically what it means is if you settle a city um it's going to be two pop yeah you know, your cap's going to be three because of the palace any city that you settle uh, normally no matter where it is is going to be minimum two housing and then the palace gives you an extra one. So yeah, if you settle your cap, it's going to start at three housing. I think a good strategy to think about with this is to just focus on settlers early game. Um, you don't want to be sort of stuck at three housing, sorry, three population, uh, and you can't grow. Um, let's carry on. Their unique ability, Mayab, provides farms with additional housing and gold as well as additional amenities for every luxury resource next to the city center. Now I've just gone back in the video and paused it here, um, just because the, the person that's playing the game is hovering over the uh, unique farm ability that the Mayas get. 
So as mentioned before, um, you don't get any housing bonuses from settling next to rivers or coast. So you're probably thinking, okay, how do I grow my cities? Well, their unique ability basically gives the the Myers more more housing and more gold for farms. Um, a normal farm will give you half, so sort of zero point five housing. So to get one, you need to make two. Whereas the Maya are getting, as we can see here, um, the the normal one food. Uh, you're going to get one gold and then 1.5 housing. So that's that's quite a lot, actually. That's a significant amount. Two two farms is obviously going to give you another three housing. So you've already gained the the amount of housing that you would have got from settling next to a river anyway. Farms aren't brilliant, though. This is good. this is a kind of a problem in a way. You don't really want to be building farms in the early game. Um, obviously, in multiplayer production is key. Um, so not only are you using those very important early builder charges on farms, you're also um, not improving your production. So yeah, I'm not. It might it might work out okay in the end. Obviously, you're going to get gold. Gold can be super useful early game. You can do things like buy monuments, so you're kind of saving the production in that sense. And the final thing they mentioned with the uh, unique ability was the additional amenities from luxuries next to the city center. I'm guessing this is, is just going to be one. So if you improve these uh, foxes, for example, you're going to get the base one that you'd normally get. And then another one for having it next to a city center. Um, it's a good ability, I guess. It's nothing too overly exciting or anything to get too worked up about. I'm guessing that works for all cities as well, and and, uh, and not just the cap. The Maya unique unit is the Hulche. This ranged unit replaces the archer and has a higher base strength. They also get extra combat strength when attacking wounded units. Oh, okay, so I'm laughing because I just got a feeling this is going to get nerfed so quickly. Um, the the BBG lately has had some bias. Uh, I feel against war sieves. A lot of the the war sieves have been nerfed. Um, for example, Zulu have lost their core bonus. Uh, Legions have, have gone up and down with nerfs consistently. And um, yeah, here we are with a archer improvement. Um, archers are obviously the sort of first uh, major unit in the game. You're never going to kill anyone with slingers. You can sometimes do a really strong archer push. It can really sort of cripple your opponent and keep them boxed in as you prefer, prepare to, um, you know, come in with your main sword and horseman when you finally get there. It does require really good execution. So this could be this could be really good in the hands of a, of a good player, especially with the plus five combat strength uh, when fighting a wounded opponent. The Maya can build the observatory, a unique district that replaces the campus. Okay, I'm going to pause the game here. Sorry, the video here because they've hovered over the uh, the tooltip for the campus, which is handy. So we're going to discuss this now. We've got the observer uh, observatory um, replaces the campus district and easy to build, cheaper to build. Sorry, that means you're going to get those all important early scientist points rolling, especially if it's a good scientist up like Hypatia. Now it does does have different bonuses to um, other sieves. You're going to get plus two science for each adjacent plantation. If you spawn on a plantation continent, you're going to be laughing there. That's a very strong bonus. Um, you know, if you have three around it, you're already at plus six, which is crazy. Um, I don't think you're really going to get any more than that unless you get super, super lucky and you're playing on abundant resources, which we sometimes do in multiplayer. You get plus one science bonus for each for every two adjacent farm districts so you know even if you don't i like this because even if you don't spawn on a plantation continent you've always got that to sort of fall back on it's not as much it's not nearly as much but um you know it can be good you're gonna get a minimum plus three if you do put uh, six around it um from what i can see here it's not getting plantation sorry it's not going to get mountain uh, adjacency so it does suffer in in some ways I think this this bonus and this sieve in general, I'm starting to feel, is going to be a sort of early game, mid game uh, sieve. I think after that, it's going to fall off a bit because people are going to be specifically settling 
cities for the really good adjacency campuses that you're not going to get obviously unless you get really lucky with having like a plus six plus campus which let's be honest isn't going to happen too often really so yeah i do feel like this this game in the late game is going to struggle but in the in the early mid game it's going to shine um so yeah we'll carry on the observatory boosts science production and gains adjacency bonuses from farms and plantations. All right, so she says there uh, that the the observatory boosts science production, um, but doesn't really sort of expand on that. I'm not sure if she just means it it boosts science production, as in the production of science, if that makes sense, or whether she means that. There's production bonuses in there somewhere, but yeah, she doesn't really mention that. But we'll, I guess we'll just see when the when the when the uh, DLC is released. Lady Six Sky's unique ability is Ish Matulahau. This boosts the strength of all units and yields near but not owned by the capital. It also means cities placed further from the capital receive reduced rates on all yields. Okay, uh, non-capital cities within six towers of the capital gain plus ten percent to all yields. That's going to be really strong, actually. Ten percent uh, can be a significant amount. So you're going to want to be settling min distance, really, from um, from your cap and all around your cap. So yeah, this sieve is all about um, sort of keeping everything in a, in a tight knit around your capital. Other non-capital cities receive minus 15% to all yields. So if you do settle up uh, seven or more tiles away from your cap, you are going to get punished for that. Um, minus 15% is is quite a lot, actually. So, yeah, you want to... I think you still would settle away from your cap, you, you know, for things like luxuries and just general expansion in the late game. But uh, you definitely want to settle your first, like, sort of, as many cities as you can the six towers away from the cap first and finally we've got plus five combat strength to units within six towers of the cap that's basically a general that's really good bloody hell combine that with the archer bonuses and you're i don't think you're going to die early game um no chance really unless you do something uh, extremely wrong so yeah um on all yields let's carry on location 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 the key to your Maya empire will be creating a close-knit network of cities that maximizes the boosts gained by being near the capital. With a smaller area to work with, thinking ahead with city and observatory placement will be of utmost importance. With a boosted output in science, you can use your advanced military tech to take on your enemies stuck in the past. I mean, yeah, she, she kind of says there what I'm thinking. You want to you want to use your early sort of bonuses that you're going to get from your campus and um, general sort of production and growth that, you, that you're going to get from the, the closer cities to try and, uh, as she says, kill someone that's stuck in the past, that's uh, struggling with science and, and so forth. Will the world recognize the strength you already know you possess? How will you lead the Maya in Sid Meier's Civilization VI? Okay, and that's the uh, that's the end of that. That's the full Maya reveal. Um, general thoughts are, as I said earlier, it's going to be a really good early game, mid game sieve. Uh, you're going to struggle to die for a couple of reasons. You've got insane archers, uh, especially with the combined strengths of everything mixed together. Uh, bonus production, um, bonus combat strength, uh, bonus combat strength with attacking units, plus five from being there. Six tiles away from your city, you know, all, all that together. It's going to get nerfed. I know it is, but we'll have fun with it while we can. Settling off water is going to be a deterrent to opponents attacking you in the early game. And so you're just going to be able to sit there and relax with your juicy campuses and hopefully try and kill someone before, like I said earlier, before the, the sort of late game starts where people start out in you due to their... Um, their search for better campuses that you're going to get the minus 15% yields from, uh, from the Maya bonus. So yeah, I think this is going to be a, a good sieve for players that 
a just starting multiplayer um because they're going to be quite easy to defend yourself with and people aren't really going to want to take your non-water cities and you can just you know sort of get a feel for the game and and uh see how things go so yeah hopefully we'll be back within the next couple of days with a columbia i believe reveal so um i shall see you then and thanks for watching if you're not already just subscribed to my youtube um please do and come and say hello on twitch and i'll see you next time